Hey, I'm back. What's up, YouTube? Brian from Aquatic Support Systems, Brian's Fish Tanks, back. It's been about a year, and I thought it was time to make an update video. Um, hopefully, I'll keep this going. I know last time I did a video, it was last May, I think. Actually, I did do a video around Christmas time, I think also around Black Friday, and my computer was down, so I never uploaded it. So I may upload those now that my computer's working again. So you might see those before this. But anyway, this is being recorded on May 23rd, 2022. So if you see those other videos beforehand, I don't know if I'll let them go to waste or if I'll actually upload them and just put a disclaimer at the bottom that these are recorded. Re only reason I would do that is so I can show you guys some progress, I guess. Anyway, enough with all that. I'm back. Um, it's been a long time. Been super busy with life. Still keeping up the fish room. I don't remember um, the last video that I uploaded if I had started doing a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, downsizing that I did or not. So you'll see in this video. Um, it's possible you've, already, you've if you watch my videos, you already know. Um, but if not, you'll see that I'm down quite a few tanks, but still have pretty much, in my opinion, the most important ones and the biggest ones still still here. So, but. Before I get started, I always got to give my company a plug, AquaticSupportSystems.com. Make sure you go over there um, if you're looking for fish food. We sell what is, in my opinion, the best fish food out there, Southern Delight. Also sell a lot of shrimp products, um, shrimp foods, Glass Garden brand, Shrimp King brand, um, Salty Shrimp, all that kind of good stuff. So check that out as well. And we do sell the, the green pro the green Pleco brand of uh, plush toys. I'll show you what those are right now if you're not familiar. They're these awesome plushies that have suction cups so you can stick them to your aquarium. That was a Frontosa. Here's a really cool, this is like the best selling one, the blue and red Beta. Um, there's several Plecos. Here's a blue Pleco. They're not all, there's, there's ones that are like actual color Cool one, crystal red shrimp, um, snail, but there's a bunch of them. And uh, if you're looking for those, they're, they've become a real popular item over the last handful of years. And uh, they sell like crazy for me, but um, Royal Pleco, Sunshine, that one's in a plastic bag. So anyway, enough about that, check them out. Um, but what I'm gonna do is, um, we're gonna go ahead and do a little giveaway just because I've been gone for so long. And who knows, if, if people like the giveaways, maybe I'll start it. Um, comment below what, what Southern Delight fish food you would like a free bottle of. Um, go on to aquaticsupportsystems.com where it lists all of them. Um, you know, anyone can do it, but I prefer if you're if you've never used it before because I'd like to be able to um, allow somebody to try Southern Delight that hasn't tried it before. But um, I'll pick a few people and I'll I'll send them out. Um, we'll need to be able to contact each other somehow. Um, but um, well, my webs. Anyway, I'll make an announcement in the in the next video, or I'll just contact you directly one way or the other, and we'll get it figured out. But. Comment below what uh, what Southern Delight uh, formula would you like uh, to try a bottle of, and uh, I'll pick a few people and and uh, get it sent out. Just a random pick. Um, so, anyway, let's get going with the um, with the fish room update. It's been it's been a long time, so um, let's check it out. All right, so here we are. Um, as you can see kind of the current view of the big tanks down in the basement. Pretty much the same tanks. I uh, got the two 210 gallon stack, the 300 and two 180s over there. And then I've got another 300 gallon that I don't believe I've shown in a video yet. But let's start over here. 
I'll show you some shrimp in my reef tanks. There's some cool additions there too in, in the reefs, not the shrimp. Shrimp I'm actually gonna probably downsize quite a bit. Anyway, this is a Midas pear, um, Amphilophus citronellus. They reside in a 210 gallon, seven foot tank. This is not Cheeto, this is Cheeto's brother who I've never named. He's kind of become the more dominant one between him and Cheeto. Um, as you can see, he likes to put his nuchal hump right up against the, gra the glass and crush it there. There's a female. These two, they spawn from time to time, but it never takes um, the eggs get eaten or the, or the wigglers get eaten. I've got some jewel cichlids in here. Um, I don't know, five or six of them. A few of them are nice reddish color. There's a pair that spawns quite often right down in this area. There's the male and then the female just went back behind there. There's a couple other smaller females. Um, and then I got some clown loaches in there. Got a few of the jewels that haven't kind of gotten the reddish color to them. Um, trying to grow out some clown loaches in a few different tanks. Um, they just grow so slowly. And if you go out to a fish store and buy big full grown ones, that's tricky because they just want an arm and a leg for them. So there's some more loaches back there. I got a couple bikeshers in here. There's a just a basic albino Senegal back there. I got a couple ornates and uh, yeah, that's kind of the story there. Uh, down below is a 210 gallon, seven foot tank with my red devils. You have to excuse the water staining on this, this tank and actually there's some algae growing too that I haven't cleared. Honestly, I just decided to come down here and do a video. I haven't done one in a while. I've got three of the four males left. This male and uh, I got a female recently from uh, Mike Borneman. Um, Cichlid Overload is his page and his YouTube channel. He's a local guy here in the Min at Minnesota market and uh, they've been spawning from time to time. Looks like there's a pile of wigglers back there right now actually it's kind of hard to tell but you can see the rocks there anyway um i had four of these males in here all together and i'm just looking to get rid of so i just have a pair in here so if you're local and you want a really nice red devil amphilophus labiatus i mean look at the lips on these things they're massive this is actually my favorite but since this one's paired up, I don't know if I want to break that bond. He does have a little bit better orange coloring. This one's lighter. But anyway, these two are up for grabs if you're local in Minnesota. And then I got some smaller red devils as well that I got from Mike um, that are growing out. And there's some loaches in there, clown loaches. And then my female reddest latest um, is in here as well. You might remember my reddest latest pair, that awesome, big, huge, nuchal humped male that I had. He died, um, I don't know, six months ago, maybe, maybe more. Um, just kind of a fluke thing, I came down. Um, I, I had moved him temporarily, and I think that stressed him out beyond what was tolerable to be honest with you and uh came down one morning the night before he was fine looking a little stressed but he was floating at the top of the tank so that was a bummer big time bummer one of my favorite fish but what are you gonna do it happens in the hobby and uh you know these things don't live forever but there's a nice kind of alpha male of the grow outs right there some of these um, tend to end up being barred and some of them turn orange. We'll just see how this goes. I'm, I'm gonna, I don't know. I may grow these out, I may just get rid of them. I don't know if I wanna go through the time of growing them out and then trying to get, find them new homes when they're full grown, but we'll see. Over here, we still got the Umbies. This is a 300 gallon, eight foot tank. This is, uh, these are real Magdalena, Chronoharos umbariferum. 
This is Magnus, or excuse me, this is Magnus' son. This is um, Optimus. Sorry, there's a icky glare there. This is Optimus, the male, and then Matrix is the female back there. This guy is getting to be about two feet long. Super thick, as you can see. Um, honestly, that's probably four inches thick, but just a super awesome specimen. He's one of very few, at least known, um, descendants of Magnus that are out there because some of the other real nice ones that other hobbyists had have since died, um, unfortunately, but that happens. Um, so this one um, is, I would consider, fairly rare. Um, I'm sure there's other people that bought Magnus Fry over the years and might have even grown some out that maybe aren't on YouTube or aren't involved in Facebook groups. Um, if you do have uh, a nice specimen that's a uh, descendant of Magnus, and, and you know who you are if you do, because um, if you know who Magnus is, you know. Um, let me know, put a comment down below. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this guy, he's, he's a fun fish. He's still alive and kicking and very healthy and doing well. Um, and, sh and, and as she, she is too, so. Um, for those that do remember back when the kind of the umby craze was really going, um, you know, Mike Mann, uh, before he got out of the hobby, he had a bunch of different umbies and one of them was um, Enigma. And uh, that went to my buddy LaCour when Mike got out of the hobby. Um, LaCour ended up getting out of freshwater fish, so he sold them. And uh, it's made it around to a few different uh, owners locally, the, the pair, the male and the female, um, from what I understand. And fairly recently, sometime within the last year, the guy who, who has them now, or had them, I don't know if he still does, contacted me and just said, hey, what do you know about this fish? I told him about them, and last I heard he was looking to get rid of them, but it's kind of neat to know that a fish from that's as old as this one here is, is still around locally and still in the hobby. So that's that tank. Um, then over here we've got Cheeto. This is another, um, boy, you can tell that I just came down here without planning because I did not look at all this algae and stuff on the tank. Cheeto Amphilophus citronellus, Midas cichlid, and then a female. Real nice female. This is actually um, his daughter. <coughs> um, I would never, just so you know, um, if they spawned, which they have um, kind of shown behavior and I think they have kicked out a spawn or two over the, the years that they've been together. Um, I would never even think about pulling fry, let alone putting them out there because that would be not cool as far as the hybrid thing goes when it comes to these uh, awesome fish that people bring into the hobby from the wild. These aren't wild caught, but you know what I'm saying. Um, got a couple of Red Hook Silver Dollars in there and then some convicts. The convicts, um, I don't know why, but over the last year or so, I've really liked convicts um, just as an additional fish in with some of my pairs. These things breed like crazy all over the place. I'm sure I can find one of them with some fry. Maybe not right now, but it's almost always fry either from a pair over on this side of the tank or else right by this tube here or else over kind of by this plant in these rocks. Um, so kind of rare that there isn't right now, but over here is the Hadeensis tank. Ooh, and we've got free swimmers down here with that female. There's the male. He is starting to look really cool. And then another female, and she's got eggs in that flower pot. So the last time I did a video, there was probably eight in here and what I did is I pulled there were seven there I pulled four and left two females and a male to just kind of see what happens there's just too many too many fish and they were getting to be too big so I wanted to lessen the load I was gonna have just a pair and I decided 
for once I would try kind of a trio, see what happens. But what's happened is he's breeding with both of them. And that's only been a couple of weeks. He was breeding with three different females at one time when I had all seven of them in here. I think I actually started with eight, but one died from aggression when, when they were smaller. But look at this guy. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on there. Again, some free swimmers over there. I thought that when I pulled the other ones out of there that they would stop making these mountains of rock up against the front class but apparently that it's must be this male that does it or maybe the females or maybe both of them but um it is what it is you can't be picky all the time when you're keeping fish and how they decide that they want to decorate their own habitat but yeah that's what's going on there the final cichlid tank is this 300 gallon that probably haven't seen before unless I decide to upload that video that I did around Christmas time that I mentioned earlier in the intro 300 gallon um, six foot um, and three foot deep uh, one of those uh, they call it the marine land deep dimension reef ready um, I decided well you you've seen these in a prior video but they were a lot smaller I decided to go back to doing some basic stuff and get some Oscars again so I got Started with five Tiger Oscars when they were probably two to three inches. Uh, one of them did die due to uh, um, uh, aggression, but these four have lived in harmony. I wanted an odd number, and so if I do find locally somebody that's got a nice Tiger Oscar around this same size available, um, I might pick it up, but that may not be a good idea right now too because these guys are used to living together and could cause problems. I haven't sexed these for male or female. I'm not interested in breeding them. They're not, you know, um, wild caught or F1 or F2 or anything. I just got them from Live Aquaria and I just wanted some nice colorful ones. And as you can see, they've not disappointed, um, especially this one, this one, and this one. This one here is orange in the background is a little bit more faded and more of a big orange blotch versus the tigerish pattern, I guess you'd call it. But I like them all. And you know, you forget, once you start getting into some of the more rare exotic cichlids, you forget about these basic ones. I don't know if you call them beginner cichlids or basic cichlids or common, I guess common's the, the best word. Um, but yeah, they're fun. And they got so much personality, these Oscars, man. Um, Feeding time is just crazy. Um, you know, they're just they're just really fun fish. Um, in here, I've got some convicts also that breed like crazy. I've got a few bikers, bite, bitchers, whatever you want to say. And then I've got this, um, you might remember this ruby red pair of jewels that were um, over in the Midas tank um, before. They breed like crazy together too. And there's actually a third, uh, another female that I put in here and uh but these two just breed together and that female is just the odd woman out and then i honestly i forgot what these two are they're smaller cichlids kind of like i don't know if they're from the convict family or similar but uh, i forget which ones these are if you know put a comment down below but these are pretty much full grown so yeah convicts in a couple different tanks just for something different um, this has, uh, oh, here's some convicts that have bred back here. Um, you might be able to see some free swimmers. So, this Senegal biker is out. There's an ornate in here and one other kind I forget and then a couple Senegalists. Um, I gotta do something. This has got a sump with uh, the corner overflows and they like to get into the uh, the little cutout groove that the um, return that the return line comes through and then I find them down in the filter sock of the sum so there could be one or two down there right now to be honest with you so I got to make a modification there but anyway that's the Oscar tank I've been really really enjoying these guys and it's nice to have another 300 gallon um, it's just amazing how faster fish grow when you've got 
more gallons, um, bigger tank, more room for them to swim around. Um, so that's fun. I'll show you some shrimp real quick. Oh, one other thing, um, the, the Hadiensis that I pulled are down here. They're just always spooked and hiding, but if you're local and looking for some Hadiensis, I think I've got two males and two females. Um, here are a few of the, um, the, uh, these are, I'm blanking out right now, um, fancy red tigers, low grade. Got some crystal reds up here and a boatload of hooker ace moss. Um, if you're local and looking for some of that, hit me up. We can work out a deal. Uh, this is just kind of a mix Thai V, Taiwan V tank. Um, these are some low grade galaxy tigers, fishbone galaxy tigers, I think. Um, as you can see, some of them have turned out as they bred. Um, they've kicked out some pintos and stuff like that. So, and then my um, my blue bolts. I'm probably gonna take down some, if not all, of these shrimp tanks. So, if you're local and looking for shrimp, let me know. Um, I can let you know what um, what, uh, what 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 I'm selling them for. So we're gonna go upstairs now. There's some changes up here, and um, definitely gonna see those. First, I'm gonna show you what's still the same. These are the reef tanks in the living room, entertainment room, whatever you wanna call it. It's 125 gallon over there, and then the uh, Red Sea E260. I'll put on one of these, um, one of these filters so that you can see the coral better. It filters out the blue light. Um, we'll kind of go through this tank a little bit. The, uh, the purple tang is still kicking and really growing well. Looking awesome. Got a bunch of euphelia and softies in this tank. Um, torches over here. I had some, this, this to purple one with green tips was five times that size and um, uh, you can see the dead heads right there. Um, a whole bunch of it died off a few months back. That was a bummer. Got a bunch of zoas here. Some, uh, oops, sorry, I'm trying to close the door down below. Um, some symphelia, these reddish ones. This is a real small well, so some shrooms back there. And a starfish right there, named after my mom, Lorna. Um, some uh, trumpets. Ooh, the neon green ones came unglued again. I gotta re-glue those and get them back up in the rock. Toadstool right there. Duncan. Anyway, that's that tank. Um, over here, this tank is doing fairly well. Um, I got this massive leather toadstool here. It's not all the way open right now. I've never seen this happen before, but I think it's sending off babies. That's why there's these kind of little things around the edges that look like smaller toadstools. Um, there's one that I noticed came, is back here, so I think that's what it's doing. And then a few months ago, I saw another one come off and it's now on the rock right there. But there's some more trumpet corals, candy canes, whatever you want to call them. Um, a, uh, a, I think that's called a cabbage leather, the green one. Some more um, leathers, toadstools here, some mushrooms, some acans. Um, this one just has not wanted to open up since I got it. I, I brought it home from my local fish store, New Wave Aquaria, and I just cannot get it to open. So I'm going to move it again and see. It's slightly open. You can see some polyps. There's green polyps on it. And then some euphelia over here, some good and bad. I had this awesome wall hammer and a wall frog spawn up on this ledge. They both died. Um, but just some frog spawn and hammers throughout here. 
And then lately, well, check out this mushroom. This thing is just grown. It's, I love it. <clears throat> I just got a small one. I guess this would be some sort of a Ricordia, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not super, super well knowledge with coral names all the time. But um, anyway, recently I've been getting into Welsos and I've got four so far and <laughs> really digging them. Just look at the colors on these things. And they're so big and fluffy, they just look so cool. I'd like to get more. They're not the cheapest things out there though. I'd like to put some over on that corner as well and just kind of work it. All right, for some new stuff now, the office tanks have turned into salt water. No longer do I have, I don't even know what the last tanks were that I showed you guys in here, but I had a 125 gallon African cichlid tank over here, had a 75 gallon tank that the last thing that I think it was, was goldfish, fancy goldfish. Well, I bought two new Red Seas, and this is the Red Sea Reefer 200 XL, and as you can see, it's a NEM only tank. Got a bunch of rose bubble tip anemones. These were all ones that were in that smaller tank out in my living room. I um, moved them all over to here, and actually I didn't do it. Um, the guys from New Wave Aquaria that set up these tanks for me when I purchased them um, did it for me. They were able to get seven anemones moved. They've since split, and I think last count is there's 11 in here now, including one new one that I recently bought. But look at this massive one right front and center, and then you can just see all over. There's seven clownfish in here. They're just loving life, uh, hosting. I always forget if, if the clownfish host an anemone or the an anemone hosts the clownfish, but either way. Then I got a bunch of rock flower anemones in here. Some sexy shrimp, as you can see. Those are always fun to watch. If you don't know what sexy shrimp are, they're these little ones here that the tails move in, and they call them sexy shrimp because it looks like they're wiggling their butts. Um, and I got some, you can see one of the anemone crabs right there. And there's a firefish in here as well. Some of these rock flower nems are just super cool. Some of them decided to walk back here, so you can't always see them. I moved one recently, and then there's one stuck to that rock there. But, um, yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, look, at there's four, four sexy shrimp on this one right here. Oh, this one's decided to climb up the wall. Where'd he go? <laughs> anyway, so that's that tank. And then this is the Red Sea Reefer. 525 XL, which is about a 110 gallon five foot tank. And what I decided, check out the picture above there that I bought, that's really cool. I think it goes nicely with a reef tank. Um, this is gonna be in primarily SPS only tank. Um, I'm having some problems with it, but um, we're getting things resolved. But anyway, um, I got all these SPS frags. Um, SPS is, I said before that corals are hard hard for me to remember names. SPS is the worst because I just haven't done it before. But I got some scolies down here, which technically aren't SPS. And then also, look at this candy cane. Um, stuff like that. But otherwise, a bunch of SPS. So I'm getting some growth, not as much as I'd like. But the major problem that I've got, as you can see, there's sea lettuce growing on these rocks. And I made the stupid mistake of getting sea lettuce for my sump and some probably just a little bit made it through the sump and into the display tank and before I noticed it it started growing and it multiplied and multiplied and multiplied so what I'm gonna have to do is pull all these rocks and scrape it off with a brush or something and if I can't do that I'm just gonna have to get all new rocks because I think it looks like horse crap and I'm not gonna deal with it but um in the meantime we'll take a look at some of the fish i got a yellow tang in here that he's probably grown he was just a teeny little guy when i got him yellow tangs are super hard to find and when you do they're really expensive now but he's growing good i got a gem tang kind of a holy grail fish for me fun to get one of those um, i got a couple blue hippos a big one and a small one um a white-tailed coal right there, um, a black and white tang, I believe he's called right there, 
um, some uh, chromis. This red chorus wrasse right here is probably the coolest looking fish in that tank. Just came upon him up at New Wave Aquaria and got lucky and said, yes, I will take him. And I'm super happy. Look at that thing. Um, there's a couple of uh, diamond gobies and a couple of uh, watchman gobies in here. Uh, six line ras, uh, melanaris ras back there, um, some of the basics. Um, anyway, um, see if we can get some good close ups of the gem tang. Everyone always likes to talk about gem tangs, blah blah blah. I mean, they're super cool, and I'm really glad I got them. You know, typically I, I don't pay that much for fish. If you know about gem tangs, you know what these guys cost. Um, but, um, it is kind of neat to have him and I'm super, super happy with him so far. He's got a lot of personality. Anyway, that is about it for now. I've really ran a long video here, so I'm going to cut it short. But again, like I said at the beginning, I appreciate any support on AquaticSupportSystems.com. Go over there, check it out, buy some fish food, comment below on which which uh, bottle of Southern Delight you would like to try. And I'll pick some people and send out a few uh, bottles. Um, oh, this one core right here, I just wanted to take a look at or show you guys real quick that I forgot. It's one of those encrusting types. Love this thing. Anyway, until next time, later.